Hi friends, so I have uh, essentially um, gone through the trouble of um, listing 15 points you should consider when picking your broker. So these are um, all the points I've considered and I've also um, picked some of the best that I've seen. So first of all, you want to look at the minimum deposit. Now, contrary to popular belief, you don't want one that requires a lower minimum deposit. So a better broker isn't one who allows you to open an account with $1. A better one is actually one like Evertrade, which has a higher uh, minimum deposit. And the reason for that is that they um, essentially screen off those who aren't serious or those who aren't um, going through wholeheartedly. Because if you're going through wholeheartedly and you want to actually practice real risk management, why would you start an account with $1 or 100 it, that's why Evertrader is what well, Evertrade is um, one of the best, and even Exide Trader, the ones that have a higher um, uh, minimum deposit are actually better than the lower minimum ones, even though there are some really good ones which have um, lower minimum deposits. So you want to look for a licensed and regulated um, broker in preferably many countries, not just one. So a lot of them that I've seen, a lot of um, scanny ones, are the ones that have... Um, are regulated in the Cayman Islands, regulated in Cyprus, regulated in Barbados or some island, um, some exotic island there. And the reason being for that is because um, they have less stringent requirements and they have less eyes on them. So they'll get registered in the Cayman Islands, in, um, in Cyprus, and then they'll operate in South Africa or Nigeria. It's to um, essentially escape the regulators. So you want one that's registered and regulated in the UK and the States, um, in South Africa and preferably in your home country. Make sure it's also regulated in your home country because there are ones which aren't like markets, one, two, three. Um, I think also, no, they, they got, re FXTM got regulated in South Africa. So like one which was really popular was like um, markets, one, two, three. Um, there was also like this huge scandal with them and Sandile Shezi saying that he was promoting a scammy broker and things like that When in reality, it was just that they weren't regulated in South Africa, but they're regulated elsewhere You should pick one which is regulated in um, South Africa because or your home country because South Africa has really really stringent uh, laws and regulations so you're you're basically uh, you have some security knowing that um, the regulators in South Africa will make sure that these um these people aren't using uh, manipulative uh, tactics or um, uh, scammy uh, marketing and things like that. So you preferably one in your home country so that if you have issues, you can report to the authorities in your country. Um, there's also the issue of ECN versus market maker. A lot of people will tell you avoid the market maker and go for the ECN broker. The ECN broker will charge you more money and has a higher... Um, a minimum deposit so a lot of ecns that i know start off at a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand um, us dollars so that's a pure ecn you should also be aware that um, a lot of people will tell you um oh no i know a broker which doesn't require a hundred thousand but it's an ecn it's not an ecn and so what happens with the requirements of the law is that they don't have to say that they're a pure ECN broker. They just have to say that they're an ECN broker if they're offering ECN services to some clients. So some clients will be pure ECN and others not. And so if they have even one ECN client um, who has an account of 500,000, they can now say we're an ECN broker, even though they're not actually an ECN broker. So if it's a very low minimum deposit and they're saying that they're an ECN broker, it's very unlikely that they are. I know one which has a lower minimum deposit, which is ECN, which is like FXCM, that's an ECN. And I think FXTM is an ECN. But I also have to mention that I've looked through um, like the failure rates of like the ECNs and the market makers. And I've realized that there's not much of a difference in, in, in terms of the um, failure rates. The failure rates is around 78, 76%. And what I actually noticed that the ECNs actually have a higher failure rate than the market makers. I know it's hard to believe, but if you go through the regulated brokers uh, in South Africa, um, they're, um, what's that that body called? Uh, I forgot the, 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 the financial services regulated, FS, FSB, yes, FSB. They have a list of all the regulated brokers. They also keep the data of the uh, failure rates. And you'll actually find that the market makers actually have a lower failure rate than the ECNs. So, which is very strange because a lot of people say like market makers are bad, avoid market makers, when in reality, there's not much of a difference. It all comes down to the person themselves. 
um, the best ones that I have picked, like my favorite, absolute favorite ones, which I think are really, really good. You have Tickmo, has really low spreads. You have um, XM, really low spreads, that's Tickmo. You have XM, XM is there, even though it's a market maker, it actually has the highest retention rate, meaning that it keeps most of its clients for long periods of time. And obviously, if your clients are on average, say for 10 years, it means that they're really happy with the services. So XM um, has a great credit uh, system. They give a lot of credit to their uh, clients and they um, they have the high one of the highest retention rates. So things like JP Morgan Markets, JP Markets had a very low retention rate, meaning that you'd start, you'd open an account with them today and then you'd last three months. So a lot of brokers actually have a retention rate of like three months, whereas XM has up to like three, five years. So clients are much, it tells you that clients are much happier with XM. Uh, plus 500 is also a really really good one the only um downfall with that one is um it has it has some restrictions on citizenship if you're not a citizen of certain countries or you're not a res permanent resident of south africa you can't use it fxcm is a great global one it's it's every it's, it's, in, it's in the uk it's in south africa it's in the state it's a great broker it's been there for a really long time um one that i really trust in south africa which isn't as big as fxcm is fxtm so there's FXCM, there's FXTM, they're all great brokers. There's Evertrade, which is also really, really good. It also offers a course, intro course, market analysis, signals, things like that. And then there's the Australian one uh, called XI Markets. And XI Market has just opened um, a branch in Johannesburg and Cape Town. So they're now in South Africa, but I know it was predominantly used um, in Australia. Um, established brokers, uh, not refurbished brokers. So what tends to happen in the broker's business, if you don't know, is that a broker will uh, be a bastard broker, essentially, and they'll take a lot of people's money, they'll take the money and run. And what happens is that they'll just go broke or they'll face lawsuits and then they'll just come back again in a different name. So like, for example, uh, I'm not trying to mention names, but like, for example, Veracity Markets. A lot of people don't like Veracity Markets because there's been some speculation that the owners are some of them who've been um, responsible for some of the brokers which were um, told to close down. So what happens is like a, a broker or like people will start a brokerage it will go broke and then they'll just start another brokerage company or or the they'll just rename the the company so it's a whole new company even airlines do that when airlines are known for causing crashes and killing uh, people they just refurbish the name change the name start again so you should be very careful about that pick one which has been operating for a long time um preferably one that also doesn't have different names in different countries that's also a warning sign if you have a company which uses a different name in different countries. They know that they have a bad reputation, so they change the name. That's not an established, it's a refurbished broker. Um, look at the deposit and withdrawal times. A lot of the bastard brokers, um, they have a short deposit time. So when you deposit, it will take you um, a few minutes, like XM, for example. It's not a bastard one, but I'm just saying like the deposit and withdrawal time is really good. So you'll find that with bastard brokers, you deposit within five minutes and then to withdraw it will take you five six weeks they'll tell you um we don't do withdrawals unless you use the card you deposited in they'll tell you we only do um withdrawals in us dollars even though you deposit btc bitcoin whatever it is so be careful at, and look at the policies and tnc's of deposit and withdrawal times you want to prefer um, a broker which offers crypto stocks options and fx um and that point is important because you don't want to keep having like five different accounts, one for FX, one for options, one for um, for stocks, one for cryptos. You just want to use one broker. Um, don't be concerned if your broker doesn't have copy trading or signal, things like that. A lot of it doesn't work anyway, so don't be concerned with that. Some come with courses and analysis and some assistance. So you'll find they host uh, regular webinars. They have courses and things like that. Um, a good one is uh, Evertrade, but that doesn't mean that everyone that offers a course and analysis is a good broker. I know JP um, JP Markets had a course and it offered uh, analysis and assistance, but it still went broke. So it, it doesn't mean that it's a valid broker just because it helps you. A lot of the times they're helping you and they won't tell you um, any relevant information. In fact, they'll actually tell you wrong information or they'll give you very limited information because obviously if you win they're not making much money besides spreads 
So um, pick one that has a user-friendly platform and risk calculators. What I mean by that is you want a, a platform which is easy to use. You don't want to struggle finding sell and buy buttons and then um, struggling to close trades, struggling to move your stop loss. I like XM for one reason that like it helps with um, calculating risk. Once you set your stop loss and you move that cursor to the stop loss, it tells you um, how much you're going to lose if your stop loss is hit. So it's easier for me to calculate my risk. And it also comes with a risk calculator. So some brokers like FXCM or whatever it is have a risk calculator. It helps you calculate your risk, which is really, really nice. Um, we talked about avoiding um, offshore brokers. Um, they'll take your money and run. It's like um, crowd one. They'll, they're regulated elsewhere. They'll take, if they're even regulated, they'll take your money and run. Pick one with a good customer service and look at people's reviews online. Customer service is really important. And I remember, remember having problem with um, a certain broker I was using. I think it's called, it was Markets123 and Africa something. I forgot what it was called. And I remember the customer services providers, whenever you talk to them and you have a problem with them, a lot of them would say, like, I don't speak English. It's not to say that, you know, there's something wrong with that. But, like, you want someone who will help you say, I don't speak English. But they speak English and um, they respond on time. Others, you know, like a broker, you will have a query with them and you want to talk to them, to someone in customer service. And they'll tell you, wait a week, wait two weeks, or have a long waiting period, or they'll just ignore you, which is what JP um, Markets was doing. They will just ignore you. You should also look at um, people's reviews online. A lot of the times, they'll always show you the good reviews on their website. So you want to make sure you go through the reviews people have online and talk about that. Because people complained about JP um JP um, markets way before it crashed. Everyone always talked about it. Um, veracity markets, people are always giving reviews about why it's a bad broker and things like that. So you'd rather learn from other people than um, be the lesson. Um, pick one with uh, less spreads. Um, and a lot of brokers, if you don't know, around 11 p.m. and um, 12 a.m., they increase their spreads to knock people's stop losses. If you haven't noticed... Um, I would encourage you to take a look at 11 p.m. and around 12 a.m. in the morning when people are sleeping. What happens to spreads and how they go after stop losses. If you think I'm lying, just take a look and um, watch for yourself. Some brokers allow hedging and others don't. I'm not really concerned with those that don't allow hedging because I don't understand hedging uh, very well. But obviously, if you're someone who likes hedging, who understands hedging, um, this would be an advantage for you. So pick one which allows hedging, especially if you want to hedge in the future. You can use that. For someone who doesn't know hedging, don't try it. It will end badly. Pick one which has tight spreads, like uh, Tickmo has very tight spreads, low swaps, so holding your positions overnight. Some brokers don't even allow you to hold positions overnight or over weekends. And the problem with that is that encourages over trading and day trading so that you keep paying more in spreads and more positions are open. So you want to avoid brokers like that. And especially ones which... Um, don't allow you to hold trades over weekends. And they, and it also depends on which ones offer nice accounts. So there's some which offer zero uh, spread accounts. Those are really nice. They just take commissions and they don't take spreads. They're those which are, have Islamic accounts, um, which obviously have less charges on certain days and which are closed on certain days. So you should also pick one which has an account which suits you. If you, have a stu if you want a student account with a lower minimum deposit, you should go for that. If you want one where you can... Um, Watch your positions over the weekend. You should pick one that does that. If you want to pay commissions but not spreads, you should pick an account that does that. So those are the, like the 15 points which I think you should consider when you're trying to pick your broker.